I think it's incredibly important, and I'm not going to hedge here, incredibly important that you have some form of social presence for who you are. Um, my assessment of the current situation, particularly us being distributed across the world due to COVID, means that the impression you get to make is often going to be virtual. It's going to be virtual and there's, it's not likely to change for some time. Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today, I brought in Eric Weber, who's worked as a senior data scientist at LinkedIn and currently leads all of experimentation at Yelp. Eric is truly one of the main voices who's shaping the data science community today. He's most active on LinkedIn, so definitely follow him there. In the video today, we're gonna to talk about a few of the most pressing topics in data science. I hope you find it useful and informative. This question, I think if I could ask it in every interview I ever do, I, I would love to, because it shows self-awareness in terms of the issue at hand. And that issue specifically is that we tend to fall in love with the tools and not the business problem. And we're trained on the tools, we're trained on the techniques, we are trained to optimize an algorithm, but very rarely are we taught to love the context of the business problem that we're dealing with. We just aren't. We, we almost think about the context as this generic placeholder, which is filled in as we start to use the techniques, rather than thinking about the techniques and the tools as something that helps us understand and enhance the context and the problem in front of us. Something that is really powerful for data scientists and the companies they work for to align is to find common ground on the business problems. On the company side, to make sure that the onboarding phase is not how to use the tools and how to get the data, but to actually understand the business, how it makes money, what risks they have. And on the data scientist side, don't be content with just understanding the tool and the technique and think that you have become a data scientist. The data science work you do is going to be defined by the context in which you work. It's going to be defined by your ability to understand how to help the business make money and make good decisions. And so that disconnect is because data scientists and businesses are trained in often very different ways. And we optimize on different things. And that disconnect will probably always be there. It's just a question of how do you address it at a company level and employee level. So. I I agree 100%. And I think that one of the other challenges comes from the business direction. And we've talked about this before, but a lot of the times the business stakeholders don't necessarily have a great understanding of what data science is. Sometimes they think of it as a black box. Sometimes they think of it like magic, like we're going to hire this team and data science is going to fix this problem. Uh, but they don't realize that there are some prerequisites to actually, you know, getting a data science team up and running actually creating results from the data science work at hand. And they also don't realize that, you know, a lot of the time one person cannot do all of the data science work at a company, if you're looking at a smaller or mid-sized company. And so data scientists go in with expectations about, oh, you know, I have all this, this data or, you know, in an interview, both sides are trying to kind of please each other. And unfortunately that leads to some miscommunication of information. So I think that from the business side, like being completely clear about what the problems are that you're facing, being completely clear about um, the types of projects that the data scientists will be working on is extremely important because when there is any ambiguity there, that leaves a lot of room for you know, someone to be discontent with the work that's being done. So that's kind of a, a business conceptual thing, a hiring process thing, uh, and also an individual like kind of personality thing. And that's why the, I think that this is such a complex challenge is that it isn't always just one thing. It's kind of like two people from completely different cultures coming together. There's gonna be a lot of different things uh, that don't necessarily match up. 
And so the more that business stakeholders can understand where a data scientist is coming from, and the more that data scientists can understand business problems, like you've mentioned, you know, it's a slow process, but that gradual uh, coming together is going to be something that actually, hopefully, gets at a solution to this problem. So I think that the biggest challenge that companies face is a kind of challenge in overall data science, and that's defining what data science is. And what they have to do is first define what it is for their organization. And that can be an extremely difficult problem because it's so broad. Instead, what they should be doing is really focusing on the problems that they have and how data specifically can help solve those problems. So, you know, rather than thinking of it as data science, they should be thinking of it as like, you know, almost like consulting or, or, or just figuring out exactly what they need to do and get the right resources to actually do that. In 2020 going forward, the right resources are probably gonna be something related to how you collect data, how you manage your data, how you analyze your data. And, you know, after you actually have those tools in place, that's when you can start calling it a data science team. That's when you can start uh, actually, you know, investing again in the things that actually matter for the problems that you're trying to solve. So that's a great point when it comes to defining what data science is. And related to that is data science is sort of formed and shaped by the people you have in your organization. So one of the biggest challenges that companies face is having the right people in place to define what that vision is. And very often, particularly for smaller companies, particularly if they're historic, they've been around for a long time and they remain small or they're just starting up, they may not understand what that vision of data science can do for them. And because they are also the ones who are hiring, they don't necessarily know what they're looking for in hiring that first data scientist or the second or the third. But you can bet the success of the data science function in an org, or you could just call it data at large, is very dependent on that first group of hires that you make. And an enormous challenge is companies aren't sure how to hire in this space. They aren't sure what it looks like to be talented, what it looks like does, do we do we need to have someone with a PhD? Do we need to have someone with 10 years of experience? That's not clear because a lot of this is still greenfield opportunity. And so one of those challenges is knowing how to start. And knowing how to start is often dependent on what you already have in house. And so a lot of times companies have probably more or less succeeded or failed in their vision based on who they bring on initially and that's a hard thing to understand but i've seen it play out <laughs> again and again you know I, I don't think that this is necessarily the biggest problem um, but it is kind of attached to how data science teams are started and how, how how they're hired for i think there's a big challenge with buy-in across an organization and that you know someone on a, on a, you know, on the C-suite really wants it and then other people are skeptical of it. It's probably not true at some of the most tech forward companies, obviously, but if you're in like a mid-sized company that's interested in experimenting with data science, there's going to be a lot of naysayers and success is going to be gauged on, on one project or, or a couple projects and not on like a, a, a large sample size. And that's something that can absolutely kill, kill a data science team in the first couple months if they haven't produced anything. And like, that's not how data science works. Data science works by getting a couple quick wins, and not quick, a couple small percentage wins over time that add up. I mean, you can obviously have like an enterprise um, solution that does create huge value when it's implemented, but most of the the, the profit or like the, the benefit, the return on investment comes in really small one or 2% slivers here. So, I think that that's something I would really like to see companies do better is give it a chance, right? That, that's that's a, a very scary thing for a lot of teams because they feel like if they don't succeed on their first project or it isn't a big win, they might get axed or you know they might lose all credibility.
So I'll start with, is it important to share? And I think it absolutely is. You know, the best way to actually improve your skills is through legitimate feedback and is through putting yourself out there. You know, if you're just doing projects on your own and you're the only one who's evaluating their success, it's gonna be a lot harder to get better very quickly than if you're sharing it with the world. There's also some additional pressure when you're putting your stuff out there that you wanna make sure that you're doing it you know, incredibly well so you don't get too, too much pushback. A little pushback is definitely okay. You know, I don't think any, everyone has to go as far as starting a YouTube channel, for example. That might be overkill. But having a GitHub repo, putting some projects on Kaggle, it's one of the best ways that you can really showcase your skills. So if you're trying to get a data science job, I think that if you're not sharing your work in some capacity, you're going to be really far behind everyone else. I would like to think that data science is one of these professions where it's less about where you went to school or the, you know, the accolades that you have, and it's more about what you can do or what you've done from a project sense. So, you know, if it is moving that direction, the more projects you can do, the more cool stuff that you can share with everyone else, the better your chances are of actually landing a role. You know, for someone who's already an established data scientist, I think that there's still huge value in actually learning through sharing. There's so many communities out there. There's, there's such a, a rich ecosystem for data science that you know, if you're not engaging in these different areas, whether it's YouTube, on Reddit, um, you know, on LinkedIn, on, on any of these, any of these platforms, I feel like you're missing out on, on just so much really useful information. So many, not necessarily shortcuts, but so many different ways to do things and, and to improve your, uh, your perspective and, and also your analysis. So I would say that, you know, you don't have to go to as great lengths as either of us are, but you absolutely should be sharing in some capacity. Awesome. Um, I think it's incredibly important and I'm not going to hedge here. Incredibly important that you have some form of social presence for who you are. Um, my assessment of the current situation, particularly us being distributed across the world due to COVID means that the impression you get to make is often going to be virtual. It's going to be virtual and there's, it's not likely to change for some time. And another thing to consider is you have a brand. It's just your choice as to whether you're going to be driving it or someone else is going to be defining it. If you think about it that way, you, the perception that people have of you and your work is either going to be shaped by them or you can have an active part in doing that. It's incredibly important to think about having an active part in doing that. People want to understand things in a simple way. They want to go read your work and understand exactly what you're about. I want to look at a resume and understand who this person is in short order, right? That's how we make decisions. So if you think about sharing your data science work socially, it's part of building who you are and it's building and creating an opportunity for first impression or second impression or third impression in a way that you otherwise would never have the opportunity to do, period. It's whether you believe it or not, even if, if, if you share things socially, even if people don't like the stuff that you share or they don't comment on it, I promise you that people see it. People see it and they're aware that you are sharing. They're aware that you are present in the community. You show up in comments, right? You show if you're commenting and sharing valuable material. So think about it from that perspective. If you wanna think about controlling the narrative about who you are and what you do, that's why social media is really powerful. It's why we have, um, you know, people across platforms that do this because they're able to speak for themselves. They're able to create that. And it sounds weird to think about creating a brand, but everyone has one, whether you want one or not, it's really uncomfortable. And it's a word I still don't like, but the more active you are in shaping what that brand is, the better off things will be for you. I mean, I agree 100%. One, one thing that 
was, I don't think it's groundbreaking, but it was very meaningful to me is that if you don't share your work, you know exactly what's going to happen, right? No one's going to reach out to you. Nothing, you know, nothing will come of it. If you do share your work, you never know what positive things can come out of it. I mean, there are plenty of examples of where someone shared a project and a, the company whose data that they actually analyzed reached out and said, hey, would you like to interview with us? You know, I've gotten reached out quite a bit by really interesting people that have been able to have awesome conversations. With. So it's kind of like, if you do share things, like the upside is effectively limitless. If you don't, you know exactly what the upside is and it's basically zero. My answer here is short and it's yes, but everyone knew a but was coming. It, it's predicated on a lot of things happening to enable that data science to have impact, right? So I think, can data science help all companies? Generally, when we say help, I think that tends to mean from a business perspective, a monetary impact or at least some key metric being optimized. If you don't understand what metric or what you're optimizing on, how you expect data science to potentially deliver value for your company, it's hard for it to help. One thing that I see very often is companies expect data science to help because it's data science, because data delivers value almost in and of itself. But data does not have this inherent value. Just because you collect and store a lot of data does not mean that it can necessarily help you unless you think carefully about what that means. Um, so yes, it can help all companies, but there are a lot of reasons that it doesn't. And for companies who are much more data driven and data forward, it's much easier for data science to impact them because their mission and how they generate revenue is so connected to data. The further you get away from your revenue being tied specifically to data science, it's going to be a longer path to illustrate exactly how data science is helping and data science as a revenue generating activity becomes more difficult to position. So very similar to your yes, but, I think my answer is yes, when. So I don't think, you know, if you, if you go into an organization, let's say it's a, a brick and mortar store that hasn't been collecting any data on any of their sales, data science is gonna be absolutely useless to them because they have to walk, they have to collect the data, they have to be able to like organize it and use it before they can run and actually get insights from it. And I think that even now there's still plenty of companies that have very messy data that's improperly collected, it's not maintained. And in order for data science to be useful to them, they, they have to take the prerequisite steps to get to the point where it is useful to them. And that can take some time, that can take a couple of years, that can take hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. But at a certain point, if they're still around, then absolutely it could be valuable for them. And so, you know, I think a lot of people just hear data science as a buzzword, a lot of companies, a lot of managers, a lot of people in the C-suite, and they think that they need it, but they don't realize that there are these prerequisites that they have to like collect all the data, they have to, they have to do all these things for it to be useful. So, you know, for anyone watching, I think that my biggest thing is like, understand where your company is uh, in terms of how prepared they are to actually leverage data science. It's okay if you are just at the data collection stage where you know you have the systems in place but it's not organized you know what your next logical step is then so you know again walk before you can run in this room.